name is Bill Clark. I'm the Executive Vice President for CD DAPCO. And what that means is I'm responsible for the sale, delivery, and support of our customers globally. Um, and I work with what we refer to as the product development team to make sure that our customers are successful with using our tool. CD Adapco's market share uh, with respect to the CFD and CA markets can be broken out as follows. We um, have about $200 million in revenue today and user spend with us, with 85% of that being actual license consumption and about 15% being engineering services to support our software. Uh, principally, uh, we refer to that all as CFD uh, revenue, but in actual point of fact, um, our CFD tool is much more encompassing than what people traditionally think of CFD as we have electromagnetics capability, structural capability, aeroacoustics capabilities. And so the line is kind of blurred from a CD Adapco perspective of where does CFD stop and CAE begin. The biggest competitor to CD Adapco in um, the CFD space would be ANSYS Fluent. And our belief is, is that they, they're a publicly traded company, but we don't get to see exactly how much is spent on each of their products per se. But to our best guess, they're um, about 75% bigger than we are uh, with the fluent revenue. And if you add in the CFX revenue, it's probably another 15 or 20%. So between ANSYS, Fluent and CFX, and CD at APCO, I believe that we represent at least 40 to 50% of the total end user spend on CFD. In just terms of pure CFD, there are um, a couple of tools out there that compete with us head on in, in terms of the capabilities, and that would be ANSYS' CFX and ANSYS' Fluent, which I believe they're combining into a, a, a new unified tool yet to be revealed. Um, and then there is an open source code, open foam, which I would say has similar capabilities that is out there. Um, there are a number of other CFD vendors that have um, either niche offerings where they are targeting specific applications such as in-cylinder or a different user where they're maybe looking at entry-level, very low-end applications. Um, but really, we only have two main competitors uh, in the space that we're competing in today. The trends at CD Adapco with respect to some of the figures of merit that you're asking about are um, our revenue has consistently over the last five years been growing around 15%. Um, Last year, it fell a little bit off of that. We were somewhere in the 13 to 14% range, but it still was a, a respectable showing, especially when you consider that our business model is such that um, we sell annual licenses so that people subscribe every year, um, and it's all organic. We don't, haven't really acquired any companies. We're just proliferating our technology, so we're pretty happy with those numbers. Our revenue was growing at, at uh, 13 to 15%. Um, our employees were growing at that rate or even higher, okay, over the last few years. This year, we've actually scaled back a little bit to, to try and take a breath. Um, as I said earlier, we're around 485 employees globally, and we got there in relatively short order just because of the success we've been having with, the, uh, with our product. Well, that creates some interesting challenges for us, and so we need to get them on board, make them effective, and so we're, we're at the point where we're kind of taking a pause and uh, getting ready for the next, uh, the next assault. And, and so I'm sure we'll be growing again, but this year our hope is to keep the employment growth at, at somewhere around 5%. Right now, CD DAPCO spends approximately uh, 35 to 40% of its total revenue on development of our technologies, okay? Now, how much of that is R&D versus maintenance and support is difficult to break out because we have people that serve in, in multiple roles. Uh, when we talk about development, that includes testing, it includes research, um, it includes implementation of new models and fixing bugs and all that kind of stuff. But um, CD Adapco actually is at the leading edge in terms of how much they sink back into their technology, and it's a, it's a big number. I would say that our number one differentiator with respect to other um, companies that offer a similar product is our... Um, our business model where we're committed to our customer success. You know, our, a lot of tools out there have similar capabilities when it comes to physics and, and checkbox capabilities. But where CD Dapco goes the extra mile is making sure that our customers are um, educated, aware, and supported of the, cap the code's capabilities. And we make sure through dedicated support models that whenever they have a concern or question, we respond very quickly. So I would say that our people are a huge differentiator. That's not to say that other companies don't have good people, but we back up 
good people with the company commitment to making the customer successful with the tool. Our second big differentiator would be our licensing models and the flexibility with which we um, allow companies to um, access our, our technology, whether it's by consumption, which we call power on demand, or unlimited um, parallel capacity licenses, power, power sessions, or our recent um, innovation of power tokens, which allows them to do design space exploration. CD DAPCO has always been at the cutting edge of how they've offered the solution from a business perspective back to the, uh, the engineering community. A question that a lot of people ask or we're confronted with are how do we um, feel about CAD providers offering a competitive CA solution to what we, a specialized company, uh, is offering today? And again, since I believe that our number one differentiator is customer care and service, I'm, I'm not threatened on that element from a CAD company. They just can't possess the domain knowledge and expertise that we've spent 30 years uh, developing. Um, will some companies migrate towards a lower cost solution that's bundled in with the CAD package that they already have, have acquired? Yeah, sure, perhaps. But the good news is, is that the CA market is still in an aggressive growth mode and there are people that are at the leading edge, not at the trailing edge of the technology that need a company like CD Adapco that will come alongside of them and make them successful. There certainly has been a market consolidation going on um, over the last uh, you know, seven or eight years. ANSYS acquired CFX, and then a couple years later they acquired Fluent. Um, I believe Autodesk picked up CF Design. So the number of independent companies such as CD Adapco that um, are really flight leaders is, is limited. Um, there's maybe one or two that I can think of that are out there. It makes sense that a lot of these larger um, CA companies like Adesso, um, a Siemens, uh, Mentor Graphics, there's a number of people that would be interested in um, acquiring a customer base as rich as CD Adapco is in the technology because it really goes beyond just CFD that CD Adapco offers. So I would expect that sometime um, continued consolidation is going to occur. What is it that our customers, uh, I hope that they take away from our event here? Um, the first is, is that CD Adapco has a strong commitment to their success. And I know a lot of companies say that, um, but I believe that we back that up with concrete examples of, again, licensing mechanisms, support mechanisms, our, our willingness to engage them at a very um, intimate level. And I hope that they see that here. I hope that they see that our commitment to technology is unsurpassed. We have three releases of our code every year that have um, just astronomical advances. We're not making infinitesimal gains, we're making major gains. And all that is because our customers are, are demanding that we continue to just advance the technology and we love doing that. Um, so I hope that they just basically see that our efforts are being applied in a very um, beneficial manner to their success. That's, that's what I hope, because that's the message that we communicate to them all the time when we're talking to them. And this is our chance to show it and demonstrate it. When they leave here, what I hope that they um, take away is that CD DAPCO is growing beyond its original um, CFD and even CAE roots. We, we have a real strong push right now about multidisciplinary um, design exploration. And what that means is that we're trying to, uh, simulation is not the end goal for people. Their end goal is to make a product better. It's to make something operate better. And if, if simulation can be a part of that, great, let's use it. Uh, and what CD DAPCO wants to be is a part of that in some small way, even if it goes beyond um, our traditional CFD or CAE capabilities, which is one reason why we acquired Red Cedar Technology. That's a platform that allows multiple companies to come together and bring their technologies to bear. And so we want to be relevant, whether it's CFD, FEA, or some other internally developed tool or technology that a company has. We want to support their initiatives to make products better not to just do simulation, but to have an impact in the world. And hopefully they see that here and will go away and give us an opportunity to demonstrate our capabilities.